In this video, we're going to talk about the element of color. Color is actually one of the most important of the elements that we need to talk about, and it's one that you really need to pay attention to what you're doing, because color can actually make or break your piece uh, if you're not careful. The scientific and artistic definition are almost identical or virtually identical. Uh, light reflected off or absorbed by an object. And what we mean by that is, if I have a white light shining down on a yellow object, as you see in the example here, that white light is producing all the frequencies of light. When that light hits the yellow object, what you're actually seeing or what is being recorded by your eye is all of those wavelengths of light being absorbed by the object and only that frequency of yellow being reflected back at you. Well, you might ask yourself, well then, what happens if I'm seeing a white object? And what you're seeing there is that white light is shining all the spectrum down. That spectrum hits the white object and it is all reflected back to your eye. So your eye interprets that as white. Black objects end up being the reverse of white. So white light shining down on a black object, instead of seeing all of that color being reflected, you're seeing all of that color being absorbed and nothing being reflected back to you. So we have to talk about ways of organizing colors. Um, so we talk about a color wheel. Color wheel is really important for you to understand because it's a way of you being able to make very uh, educated choices about your color. That spectrum is simply bent into a circle and that's how we come up with the color wheel. Ironically, it was not an artist that came up with the color wheel. It was actually Sir Isaac Newton. So there's your trivial pursuit knowledge for the day. Having the colors organized in the color wheel allowed for scientists and artists to realize that the colors can be uh, put into different groupings of colors, um, primary, secondary, and intermediate, and they all have relations to each other. So the three primary colors are just that. They're, they can't be mixed from any other color, but all of the other colors are mixed from those three primaries. So you have yellow, red, and blue, which you guys have seen since you were in elementary school. Secondary colors are colors that are made by mixing any two of those primaries together. So we get orange, green, and violet from mixing the three primaries. The last grouping of colors that we talk about are intermediate colors, and these are colors that are made by mixing a primary and a secondary right beside it. So if you look at the top left color, that is yellow-orange, a mixture of yellow and orange, red-orange below that, uh, red, violet, so on and so forth. Um, and it's important to know these three levels of color because most of your basic color mixing will be in one of those three layers of color. It's also very important, again, like I said in the opening, that you take your time and think about the colors you're using because color can actually hurt your project as fast as it can help it. And if you think about color schemes, that'll help you make smarter choices. Color schemes are grouping of colors into categories that create moods, feelings, or unify a piece. These color schemes that we're going to talk about, we can use white, black, and neutral colors with them, and it does not change the color scheme. So we got to start off by talking about neutral colors. These are colors that go with any color scheme. They are white, gray, and black, gray being a mixture of white and black, uh, and any of the browns, which browns are technically either complementary pairs that are mixed or the three primaries mixed together um, to make browns. So therefore, they contain all of the colors. So they're, uh, through color theory, considered neutral. So if we start with our first major color scheme, uh, we're going to start with a single color. So we're going to limit everything down to one color, the prefix there, mono, being one. Uh, so here I've chosen red and I add white to it or create a tint uh, and get pinks. And I can add black to that red and I can get shades or darker versions of that color. If I add white and black together, that adds gray to a color and that's considered a tone. Complementary color scheme uses two color scheme or two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. So if I'm looking at my color wheel here and I split these into complementary pairs, these are colors that are directly across from each other in the color wheel. So I have yellow and violet, red and green, blue and orange. And those top three are the ones that we mostly talk about with complementary pairs, while the other six 
uh, colors do make complementary pairs. The top three are the most uh, prevalent. And you see those at Easter and Christmas. You see them uh, on a lot of sports teams because they're contrasting colors. And they make things stick out uh, when they're put close to each other. In an analogous color scheme, we're taking any three colors that are side by side on the color wheel so they have to touch each other. So if I take that color wheel and break them into a, a handful of color analogous schemes, you'll see that they all have a color in common. So in that first row, you have yellow, yellow, green, and green. So yellow, green being the, t the color that is uh, shared by the other two. It can be three to five colors. We usually try and keep it a little limited. Um, and it will make things, it allow you to have some different colors without any color really trying to take over from the others. The last two color schemes are actually opposites of each other um, and can be used in conjunction with each other on the same piece. Warm colors are colors that give off a warm feeling or impression, um, and they're sort of the top half of this color wheel. Um, so they're your reds, your oranges, your yellows. Uh, and warm colors in a piece tend to look like they're coming forward. So if you have pieces that you want to stick up, you could use warmer colors, and then you use the cool colors to push the background back. And cool colors are just the other half of that color wheel, uh, and they're colors that give off a cool impression. Again, you can use warm and cool in the same piece um, with the idea that your objects you want to look like they're coming forward or that are physically forward should be warmer than cool colors in the background. And in both of those color schemes, as long as there's a majority of it being cool colors uh, or a majority of it being warm colors, it's still considered a warmer cool color scheme.